Tonight's bum 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 ba dum ba dum bum 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 ba dum ba dum bum 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 bum. It's ba da ba da ba da ba da 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 A dream within a dream. Take this kiss upon the brow, and in parting from you now, thus much let me avow. You are not wrong who deem that my days have been a dream. Yet if hope has flown away in a night or in a day, in a vision or in none, is it Therefore, the less gone, all that we see or seem is but a dream within a dream. I stand amid the roar of a surf tormented shore, and I hold within my hand grains of the golden sand. How few, yet how they creep through my fingers to the deep, while I weep. While I weep. O、oh、God, can I not grasp them with a tighter clasp? O、oh、God, can I not save one from the pitiless wave? Is all that we see or seem but a dream within a dream? This is、um, one of the ten poems and short stories by Edgar Allan Poe. That I used as inspiration for a new project, the Edgar Allan Poe project. The idea behind the project probably began when I started this group, which was now. Seven years ago, I think we started, and the first project we did,、uh, which we recorded, was、um, the Seven Deadly Sins. And the idea of that project was that I wrote seven pieces, one piece for each of the deadly sins of Dante. And we recorded it, and we had many, many concerts. And、um, when that project was finished, I was trying to think of another idea. But something in that zone of darkness and like the seven deadly sins, something not a little different, a little dark, a little、um, literature oriented. I'm, I've been interested in literature since I was 13, 14 years old. When I had a teacher who this is bizarre, I had a teacher who was a gym teacher, you know, uh, uh, basketball and all and football and stuff. But he was also the literature teacher, and he was teaching. Us about poetry, and here I am, this little kid, you know, and this guy is teaching me about poetry, and I loved it. I loved it. I was writing poetry back then. I found some of my poems are not very good, but, but anyway, he got, he was one that interested me in the idea of what poetry is, and how important it was, and what kind of statements you can make, and how deep it is, and how words can have many meanings, and sentences can have even deeper meanings, and short ideas can get thick and full and rich. So it was from that guy that I got interested in literature, and one of the things I thought of when, and I've always liked Edgar Allan Poe from that time period. He was one of the guys I was surprised at, and I was also interested in film and movies, and I loved watching these kind of creepy films when I was a kid. You know, like Vincent Price and The Fall of the House of Usher. You know, kind of a creepy film about a house that's alive, and you know this kind of stuff. And then it turns out that Edgar Allan Poe was the inspiration for a lot of the genre of、mm, detective films, of, of、uh, whatever horror films, 
monster films, a lot of things that he came up with and ideas, and psychological, that movies and, and writing can be about psychology. So he uh, somehow embodied the beginning of a lot of the things of, shall we call it, literature of darkness, especially in the United States, and growing into Europe and the world. So from him and from um, that search for something new after the Seven Sins project, I thought, oh, this is kind of an interesting idea. Taking some of his writings, which are mostly, mostly poetry and short stories, and I thought, okay, what if I read the sh short story or poem and then tried to write music related to the feeling that it gave me and, and try to create maybe a picture of what he was trying to create with words I was going to try to do with music. So that's my, so the inspiration comes from, thank you to my football coach from back in 1969 and, uh, and, and my interest in, in literature and how it could relate into uh, writing music and composing interesting music. Instrumentation is something also I've been fascinated with. Uh, being a jazz composer, mostly, and player, we don't always have the opportunity to do the things we want to do. We're always stuck in often traditional roles of I'm the piano player playing with a trio or quartet with saxophone or, you know, this typical stuff, which I love to do. But we're not all often given the chance to work with other instruments. And some of my favorite instruments are string instruments. Actually, when I grew up, when I was 11 years old, I started playing the double bass. And so I was playing piano and double bass for many, many years. And so that, that uh, love of string instruments has stayed with me for many years. And, and I always wanted to write orchestral things or, or string quartet things. And this kind of gave me the opportunity, this particular group. So part of, half of the group is a string quartet. Uh, two violins, a viola, and a cello. And then the other half, because I am a jazz person and I come from the jazz world mostly, um, is a jazz quartet, kind of a traditional, with, but with a trumpet as a lead rather than a saxophone, and then a double bass and drums and myself on piano. And I combine the two together and try to find a balance between the classical world and the jazz world. There's, you know, there's improvising from the jazz world. There's a lot of, especially in this particular project, a lot of composition, very difficult composition because I wanted to challenge the string people within their world as well. And also it, of course, challenged us as, as jazz players to, to have to read some very complicated things. And hopefully the combination, and we found some interesting balances of uh, the instrumentation and the music that comes with the two, two different groups of people that we mix together. But, um, of course, it's not easy to necessarily find string players who can also improvise some. That's not always an easy thing to do. And the same thing with jazz players. It's not easy to find jazz players who can read really well. So, of course, I had to really you know, find people that uh, are, how do you say, multi-tasked, multi-tasking people, that they can do a lot of different things. And I think I, I did that. I found everybody gets to improvise. Um, you know, the string players, it's not like, you know, the jazz people do all the improvising. No, everybody gets to improvise in the project. And, uh, Everybody has to read a lot of <laughs> seriously heavy music. A lot of odd meters, a lot of unusual, very unusual scales and unusual... Actually, to tell you the truth, when I was starting on the project, and, I, and I've been working on these ideas for a while before this project, of listening a lot to scores by early 20th century composers like Stravinsky, Bartok, Ravel, Debussy, these people. So I was really listening and studying their music from scores and trying to understand some of the things they were doing. And I brought some of those things into this pro project too. So it, it was a way for me, as I, I explained the other day to one of my students, I said the best way to grow and to learn as, a, as an artist of any kind is to challenge yourself with something you've never done before. You know, don't just do what you've done before, try something new. Maybe it's, it's successful, maybe it's not. But this is how you grow. And this is kind of what I did with this project. I challenged myself to use really different things that I had never used before, much more complicated things I've ever used before, 
different kinds of scales, different kinds of rhythmical things. And all these things put together create a, hopefully an interesting sound. When I was writing this, which just started about three years ago, I was quite busy traveling a lot on tour. And so, of course, you're on the bus or you're on a train or a plane and you're trying to find things to do. Instead of reading, I decided that was a good place to do some writing. So I have my laptop everywhere I went and I really wrote, in a sense, by ear, without a piano. I, I wasn't sitting at a piano or anything. I had a little tiny keyboard so I could play the notes into a program. But uh, yeah, everything's from completely from scratch and, and just ideas, you know, and I've been working on composing for many years, I've written, I don't know, well over 500 pieces of music. And uh, so I've learned different ways of how to challenge myself, how to compose. Composing is, a lot of people sit, you know, at a piano or their instrument and then they go, please, muse, <laughs> give me an idea. And then they try to do something and instead, I've learned that the best way is to start with a little seed, okay? So for example, I'll say, okay, I want to write a piece like I did with one of the pieces. Of course, it's all coming first from the image and the feeling of the Edgar Allan Poe. It's not just anything. So I have to have this, I read this, you know, and then, I, okay, now what does that make me feel? How creepy or strange or, and then from that, I'll say things like one piece I said, okay, I want to write a piece in five, four, three, and two. So one measure of five, one measure of four, one measure of three, one measure of two. That was my starting point. That's all I said. And then I wrote. You know, and then it, once you start writing, it leads you to another idea. So I find that if you start with a little idea, some seed, it could be a melody, could be a little interval. Say, I'm going to work with, or the scale, or this tone center, or, you know, this one I want to feature only strings, so all I'm going to write is strings for the first minute or two things like this, and that would just guide me. And sometimes it failed, and sometimes I threw a few things out, it didn't work like I wanted. But mostly it, it seems to work. I don't know, I just, lucky I guess. <laughs> I'll just start with a seed, okay, I'll, and I'll tell you what the seed will be. I'm going to play something that's based from a G Phrygian sound, okay, that's it. So this is G and Phrygian, and we'll see what happens.
There's G. Phrygian. <laughs> Thank you, Edgar Allan Poe.